Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria Montefusco and I'm a lover of all things when it comes to makeup and beauty. And today I'm going to be filming a video inspired by Angelica Nikovas. And this is basically some eyeshadow palettes that I was really close to purchasing, but didn't. So I hope you all enjoy this video. And if you wanna hear about these 12 palettes that I almost bought, but decided not to, then please keep on watching. So these palettes are in no particular order and I'll pop up a picture of them off to the side so you can see what I'm talking about. But the first palette I wanna talk about is the Blend Bunny, the Blends palette. So this palette is just a rainbow palette full of like mattes. I love how this palette is set up because it's like a gradient. Um, I believe it's like each, I forget if it's columns or rows, I forget, but like it's a gradient for like each color and it just seems like a really unique idea and I love using colorful mattes and this palette has really amazing reviews, like Bad to the Brow, for example, here on YouTube. I know she adores this palette and I trust Millie with her recommendations. I have had this palette <laughs> in my cart and I visited that website probably a good like three or four times now, but I've never hit the buy button. And the reason why is because it's a large palette and it's all mattes, which, you know, I'm fine with that. Um, but normally when I do my makeup, I reach for one, maybe two palettes max. And so I know I'd probably reach for my indie singles if I, re if I were to buy this, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind that. That's the reason why I have my indie singles, but something that I was like, eh, maybe not. Also, it's a really large palette and I have a limited amount of space. And so I'm like, eh, should I? And then I just have other palettes that have bright, colorful mattes in them, like my Glam Light Cake palette, my Glam Light Ice Cream Dream palette, um, the palette I'm wearing in my eyes today, and a lot of like blues and greens. Um, that is the Oceanic palette from Ace Beauté. That has a lot of blues and green mattes. Um, and then I'm also getting the Michaela and Glam Light palette collab. I just ordered that today and that's coming in the mail, you know, in a few weeks. So with more colorful mattes. So I'm like, do I really need this? I don't think so, but I've heard the formula is great. I love the gradients here and I've heard they blend out beautifully. So I am tempted. I am really, really, really tempted. The second palette is the Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette. Ugh. This palette is stunning. I love pastels. I love Give Me Glow's formula. So of course this palette was really tempting to me. What made me decide not to get this was a few things. One, Give Me Glow's pan size is huge. I believe they're 36 millimeters and standard pan sizes are normally like 26 millimeters. So it's a really large pan size. I will never probably pan any of my Give Me Glow shadows. It's just probably not gonna happen. So that's one one thing that I was like, maybe not. Um, also, I have another pastel palette in my collection, the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream palette, which I love. That's a large palette full of pastels. It's amazing, it's great. There's definitely some shades that are similar or repeats in between the two. And I don't know, I just like that the time came and passed for it and I was like, do I want to? I don't think so. Like, I remember last year when Gimme Glow came out with like their pastel like shadow bundle and I missed that and that one sold out really quickly and I was like, oh darn it. Well, if they ever release a palette version, I'll buy it. Well, I didn't. So <laughs> I, I had this in my cart. I was ready to check out the day that it launched, but I just decided not to. And I think it's because I have other pastels in my collection and just because the pan sizes are huge and yeah, I just felt like it wouldn't be anything anything unique in my collection. So I decided not go for the Pastel Dreams. I mean, I still think it's a beautiful palette. It's just something I feel like would be redundant for me to have. This next palette is something that's still kind of on my wish list. Um, and this is the Lois Cosmetics Meet Me in the Underworld palette. This palette is just like reds, greens, grungy tones. I love it. I love this color story. It has really amazing reviews. Um, when it first came out, I was like, this is a new indie brand. And, like I love the color story, maybe I should buy it, but I don't know how the formula is gonna be. And I believe they're based in Europe, so I was like, and do I really wanna pay like that shipping? Um, do I really wanna pay for shipping from Europe if like I don't know how the formula is? So I was like, eh, no. So I decided not to go for it. And then they did a restock and that one sold out like really, really quickly because a lot of people here on YouTube have been really hyping up this palette and the color story and the formula. And I was like, I tried to log on at the time, but I don't think I got it. And yeah, I obviously didn't get the palette. <laughs> so now, you know, the palette's been out for like a month or two 
And I'm just like, I think it's too old for me to want it. I don't know if that sounds bad. Like, like I bought other old palettes before. Like I bought the Natasha Nona bronze palette this year and that was released like last year. So I do buy older stuff, but I don't know. I like, I have reds and I have like grungy greens. I just don't have them in the same palette. And so I think that's what attracted me to the palette. This one's still, I'm still thinking about. I'm still like, hmm, should I get it? Should I get it? If any of you all have it, let me know what you think. But I just don't think I'm gonna end up getting it. But it is really, really beautiful. And I'm gonna keep an eye out to see what else the brand comes out with because it seems like they're killing it on formula. This next palette is the Adept Cosmetics Codain, Codon. I don't know how it's pronounced, <laughs> but it's the most recent, a recent Adept Cosmetics palette. So I did not get this one. I bet you all are shocked. I kind of was too. I was planning on getting it until basically the day of the release. And then I looked at it and I was like, you know what? These colors just don't speak to me. As much as I love Adept's formula, I have the Plain Jane and then the Hydrin, and they're great and I love the ACI formula. They're like squishy and so metallic and so sparkly and just so beautiful on the eyes. But I was just like, the, the Codain color story just didn't appeal to me. It's a lot of really like dark shimmers, which I don't really use all that much. So I was like, eh, I don't know. So I decided not to go for it. I would not get it now just because it's it's just like on pre-order and I don't I wouldn't want to wait for it if I did decide to get it and I feel like by the time I would get it it would just be like so out of date and you know I I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just the color story doesn't appeal to me. I wanted to get it because I love Adept's formula so much, but the more I thought about, it, the more I was like, nope, I can live without this. So that was on my list. I almost bought it and like, and literally did not make up my mind until the day of the launch that I was not gonna get it. This next palette is something that Britt Clark made me wanna buy, <laughs> but I have not bought it. And this is the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes palette. I know that Artist Couture just came out with a like, amped up version of this. I forget what it's called, but it's like really fiery and all that. And that one's really pretty too. I'm just like, I don't know if I need that in my life. I have so many nude palettes. And so this again, same mindset. I have a lot of nude palettes. I definitely have these colors in my collection. Britt Clark loves this palette like so much. And I think hearing her hype it up made me want to get it. So a while back, Artist Couture was having a sale on their website. I think maybe it was Black Friday. And I was like, ooh, maybe I should get it. But I didn't, I didn't get it. And then so during the Sephora sale, I was like, ooh, maybe I should get it. And I was like, eh, I'm not gonna get it. So I've had this in my cart multiple times on multiple websites. I just haven't done it because I feel like the color story is too boring. And now the palette's like, again, it's kind of old. It doesn't really appeal to me anymore just because I know I have things in my collection that can dupe it and formulas that I like and know and all of that. So I'm like, eh. So this palette, I think I just wanted it because Britt Clark hyped it so much, but I have not pulled the trigger. Don't think I will. It is a beautiful palette. I just don't think I need it in my collection. Speaking of Glam Light, because I've been talking a little bit about Glam Light, Glam Light recently released their Red Velvet palette. I did not get it. So I love Glam Light's formula. Again, I have the Cake palette, I have the Ice Cream Dream. They're both beautiful, amazing, great palettes. I love the formulas, the mattes, chef's kiss, the shimmers, chef's kiss. They're just both amazing. But the Red Velvet to me, I mean, I understand it's red velvet. It's just very monochromatic. And for it being a red velvet palette, there's not a lot of true reds in there. I feel like there's a lot of pinks and purples, reds, meh. So uh, I don't really wear, wear red eyeshadow all that much anymore. I used to, like when I first got the uh, Anastasia Modern Renaissance, I wore red shadow, red eyeshadow all the time. I don't really wear it that much anymore. The color story didn't really do anything for me. Yeah, so as much as I love Glam Light's formula, as much as I was like, hmm, maybe I should get it, maybe I should not get it, I decided not to, just because the color story was a little bit bleh for me. Next up, speaking of neutral palettes, let's talk about Natasha Denona. After I got the mini glam, and then also once I got the bronze, I was like, dang, I want the glam palette. So I'm talking about the full size glam palette, which is just cool tone neutrals. This palette is stunning. It still tempts me, but during the Sephora sale, I was debating between this one and the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette. I decided to go for the Melt one just because it was new. I've never tried Melt's formula before, and I wanted to see if I liked it. So I do have the Melt one in my collection still, and I do really enjoy it. I think it's a nice palette, but I think the formula 
Melt's formula isn't as good as Natasha Denona's, at least just from my very limited experience with both of the brands. So I think I would have been better off getting the Glam Palette, even though at the time, you know, it wasn't new. If I, if I made a video on it, it probably wouldn't get as many views, you know, that kind of thing. But I do this as a hobby. Like I don't really need to think about like, oh, what's gonna get me views? Because I'm like, I'm not monetized or anything. <laughs> this is literally just a hobby for me right now. So I think maybe I should have gotten the Glam Palette. I kind of still regret that, um, getting the Mary Jane instead, but I feel like now because I have the Mary Jane in my collection as well as the mini glam, I don't need the regular glam, but that palette's still beautiful and it still tempts me to this day. Number eight, let's talk about a brand that I have one other palette from and this is Kaleido. So I have the Club Nebula palette, which is the Angelica Nikovis collaboration. Amazing palette, made me fall in love with Kaleidos' formulas. But they recently came out with this Flower Punk palette and I was like, ooh, it's really pretty. The packaging kind of reminds me of Melt. Like, that's a lot of fun. Maybe I should get this one. But again, just something about the color story does not really speak to me. Like, there's pinks and like a teal and like greens and like, I don't know. It just like something about it does not speak to me at all. So that's the reason why I don't own the Escape Pod palette that they released last year, because like the colors just, the color story just doesn't make sense in my head. Like, I don't know what I would do like with that color story. And I'm the same way with the flower pump. I look at it, I'm like, it's aesthetically pleasing, but I don't know what I would do with that. So I was tempted to get it because I love that Angelica Nikovis palette so much. And I feel like the formula, especially those metallics, oh my gosh, I feel like they're just so amazing. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, no, if I had this palette in my collection, I'd probably use it a few times and then just really never reach for it just because I'm not inspired by the colors. So, so let's talk about Menagerie Cosmetics, a brand I've never tried and that's on my list to try. It's just they keep releasing stuff I don't want to buy. <laughs> so this first palette's the Flight Club palette. It's that all purple palette they released this year. I was tempted because I want to try Menagerie and I thought it was really pretty. It was just like, I don't know. I didn't want to like spend indie money for an all purple palette where like, I know like ColourPop has all purple palettes, like other brands have it. And I don't know, like if the color story was inspiring, I would spend the money. Or if like the, for if I heard the formulas were like out of this world, like unbelievable, I would spend the money. But I don't think I've heard like, I know people love Menagerie's formula, but I don't think I've heard like, oh my goodness, this is life changing, buy it about Menagerie. And then the fact that the color story wasn't really unique, it's just a monochromatic palette, it made me decide not to get it. I was close. I remember it was launch day. I was texting my mom. I was like, mom, you're gonna get it? She was like, nope. Then she texted me, you're gonna get it? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but I think it was at like the last minute where I decided not to get it just because it's not really inspiring to me. I think that's the pattern here. The palettes I don't get are the ones that I'm like, ooh, I wanna try this formula, or ooh, I love this brand, but I look at the colors and I'm like, meh. So I, th I think, yeah, I think that's the pattern here. And I think that's why I just didn't end up getting this one. And then similarly, another Menagerie palette, this is the Annette's Makeup Corner collab, the Serenity palette. I love Annette. I feel like Annette is a great YouTuber. She was one of the first indie focused YouTubers I ever watched. She's definitely the most colorful YouTuber I watch by far. I don't know. I look at that palette. I don't want to sound offensive here. So like if any of you all are fans of Annette's, which I am too, or if by chance Annette's watching this, I don't mean to be mean. This is just what I feel about the palette. I know it sold out. So like it's doing well, but I look at the palette and I just feel like the color story is really jumbled and it doesn't make any sense. Like, with some of these other palettes, I'm like, oh, maybe the color story's in for me, like the Kaleidos Flower Punk, for example. But like, I can, I, if I stared at it long enough, I'd be able to come up with something pretty. I feel like no matter how long I would stare at the Serenity palette, I can't come up with anything. <laughs> like the colors just don't make any sense in my head. And maybe it's because I'm not creative enough. I know I'm not the most creative person when it comes to using color. Like normally when I use color, I'm using like 
blues and greens or pinks and purples or blues and purples or like today I literally just did like all green like I use colors that people normally pair together I don't really go outside of that box too often so maybe that's why this palette doesn't make any sense to me color story wise but I stare at it and I'm like uh I don't know what to do <laughs> so I was close to buying it because I want to try Menagerie and I love Annette but I didn't buy it just because if I bought that I have no idea what eye looks I would do zero idea next let's talk about a collection of palettes that i really wanted just because of the packaging and the theming but again i was like ah, i'm never going to use these and so this is the color pop and animal crossing collaboration i love animal crossing <laughs> like i've been playing animal crossing since the um ds version so not not the original Animal Crossing on the GameCube, but the DS, not the 3DS, the DS. I, I started playing Wild World when I was like a little kid and I loved that game. Rossetti scared me to death, especially towards the end of the lifespan of my DS when it would just randomly freeze and I'd have to turn it off and then Rossetti would yell at me. <laughs> so that, that scared me as a child, a little bit traumatizing, but I loved that game. And I didn't own the Wii version, even though I had the Wii, but then I got the 3DS uh, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing uh, New Leaf. And I also loved that game, amazing. Thought it was great. And then now I have a Switch, and so now I have Animal Crossing New Horizons. And so when that came out last year, like in the middle of all this craziness, I was like, A, perfect timing to release this game. Uh, B, I just basically played that game every day for six months. I love Animal Crossing. So keep that in mind. That's why I was super tempted by this collection. But again, I just wasn't inspired. These palettes have pressed glitters in them and they're quads. So I was like, one out of four of the shades, I'm not really gonna use, ugh. And then, I don't know, it's just like, again, like monochromatic quads, I was just kind of bored. I was not inspired at all. I love the packaging, but I just think with Animal Crossing, with such a rich IP as Animal Crossing, I expected a lot more and you can do so much more with it. And I had so many ideas that I was like, ooh, ColourPop should do this or this or this, and I didn't do it. Uh, so I was just disappointed by the collection. The, the fangirl part of me wanted it because I love Animal Crossing so much. And then the more practical part of me won out and was like, no, you're never gonna use this. You just want it because of the theming and the packaging. And so I was close. But I said no, and I have no regrets on that one. And then last but not least, let's talk about Melt Cosmetics. And this is the Blueprint palette. So I, at this point, I had never tried Melt, so I was really curious about their formulas. And I really like blue eyeshadow. I also like neutrals. And so pair, and I like pairing blues and neutrals. So that palette together, I was like, ooh, that's a cool idea. I like that. And it's like the, the palette version of their stacks. So I was like, ooh, this is interesting. Maybe I should get it. Maybe I should get it. I was really close to getting it once it released on Sephora, but I decided not to. I was like, oh, I don't know about Melt's formula. I've never tried them before, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to spend that kind of money on a palette uh, from a brand that has like mixed reviews, you know? So I decided not to get it. Again, no regrets on this one, because I have the Mary Jane palette, and while I do like that formula, it's not my favorite eyeshadow formula in the world, so I'm glad I didn't end up getting the blueprint, just because I feel like it's a lot easier to work with like neutrals that you're not as big of a fan of versus like blues that you're not as big of a fan of. So if I had to get a Melt palette, which I, I did get one, I'm glad I got a neutral leaning one versus like a half colorful leaning one. So. It's still pretty, I still like it, but I'm not tempted to get it anymore. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, hearing me talk about palettes that I was really tempted to get or almost bought, but ended up not getting. There's a few on this list that still tempt me. Uh, the Blend Bunny, the Blends palette, the Meet Me in the Underworld palette from Lois Cosmetics, and the Natasha Denona Glam palette. Out of the 12 palettes, those are the three that I'm still like, hmm, should I, should I? And I guess technically since Animal Crossing released like multiple palettes, I guess it's more than 12 palettes, but I'm just saying like, I guess there's 11 palettes plus the Animal Crossing collection, but I'm grouping those palettes all into one, you know? But three of them, I still kind of want. The rest of them, I am good and happy with my decision. So I hope you all enjoy this video. I hope this encourages you to think more critically about your purchases. I know that's something that I've been trying to do. Um, and I hope I'm succeeding. And I think this list shows you that I am kind of succeeding because these are 12 things that I could have bought and that really tempted me and I didn't and I saved a lot of money because of it. So that is a good thing 
in my book. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, please like the video. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you like me, please subscribe. I post three times a week on this channel about beauty, fragrance, makeup, all of that fun stuff. And if you have anything to comment down below, any palettes that you almost bought, any thoughts on any of these palettes on my list, please let me know in the comments. And with that, thank you for spending part of your day with me and I will see you all next time. Bye.